So today I will talk about Haskell code exploration for Emacs. What is Haskell? It is a purely functional language. For example, every value in Haskell is immutable. Um, and uh, it is uh, the main compiler of Haskell, GHC. It provides API for the whole compilation pipeline. For example, the tools mentioned in this talk, including HCEL and Hadorg, they use they heavily utilize it. Um, the uh, GHC front-end API for parsing and uh, understanding the uh, identifiers in Haskell source files. Roughly speaking, a Haskell program consists of several parts. So uh, it begins with some front matters, including, uh, for example, uh, language extensions, uh, which are um, the optional language features one might want to use for uh, convenience. And uh, uh, the, and, um, the front matters also um, contains uh, module exports. So for example, here we uh, define, we declare a module f2md.config for this Haskell source file, uh, which exports these four uh, identifiers that other uh, source files can use when importing f2md.config. And the next will be uh, a block of imports so that we can use uh, libraries and identifiers in these libraries. Um, the bulk uh, of the of a Haskell source file normally uh, is a list of uh, declarations, uh, including values, types, and instances, and so on. Um, so the difference between a value and a type is that the type of a value is a type, and the type of a type is a kind. Um, so for example, here's a, a small block of Haskell source code. Um, so we define a um, range type uh, from the, a lower end integer to a higher end integer. and uh, uh, we also declare a value r of a range of the type range, uh, which is range, a range from two to seven. Uh, because um, Haskell in Haskell, um, we we like to uh, by default functions are functions can be carried. Um, so or which basically means like by default we. Uh, want to utilize the partial application of uh, functions. Um, we don't necessarily, we, we, we don't require parents surrounding uh, arguments when invoking a function. That makes Haskell, uh, that makes it possible for if you want to uh, write Haskell like Lisp by adding a bit of uh, redundant parents. Uh, so for example, here's a, like, here are two blocks of code, one Lisp, one Haskell, and they look quite similar to each other. What is a code explorer? A code explorer is a tool to browse its code base to aid code comprehension. So um, a code explorer commonly comes with uh, several functionalities or features, uh, including cross-referencer, which uh, allows going to definitions of an identifier at points or looking up references of identifier, uh, like where it is used. Um, so uh, the uh, example uh, in Emacs would be xref. And a code explorer also uh, would be able to show you documentations and signatures of identif identifiers at points in Emacs that would be LDoc, um, and uh, it also uh, commonly allows you to search for identifiers. And so something like that in Emacs could be a describe function and find function. Code Explorer is normally often quite often implemented uh, in two parts: the indexer and the server. Where the indexer um, parses the uh, source code files, indexes them, uh, the identifiers, and stores information of identifiers like the definition size and currencies, um, either in databases or in a file, or in files. Um, and uh, the other part is the server, which uh, uses the database um, created by the indexer and serves the information of the identifier. Uh, before, before I present my solution to code exploring um, some a description of a prior art uh, is in order. So there are several uh, tools that you can use uh, to for to aid code exploration, uh, including tag-based um, tools like Husk Tags and HS, HS Tags. Um, so the the limitation with these tools is like they are focused on the current project only and does not work uh, for cross uh, cross package packaging uh, reference and uh, definition um, and um, and they another problem with the tag based uh, tools is like they might not handle symbols with the same name properly so sometimes they get confused and um um and they did, uh, they gives you uh they they ask you to choose which definition what is the correct definition site even though um the the occurrence of the symbol or the symbol at point uh, has uh, only one definition uh, unambiguously um another tool is the Haskell mode. Um, it has some 
uh, limited support for LDOC uh, by displaying the signature of an identifier at point, uh, but the identifier has to be um, the identifier has to be something that is commonly commonly known or um, sort of uh, built in or coming come from the base library of Haskell. So, for example, um, it works for common functions like head and tail, and and you can see that the signature is displayed here. However, it does not work for let's say IO. IO is a type. Maybe that's the reason. Um, or let's find another function that's not from the base library to JSON is from the ASON library. Um, so um, no signature is displayed here. And uh, it, is also, it also provides some sort of go-to declaration functionality to jump to any declaration in the file. So to do that, one has to first run Haskell decal scan mode um, to enter this minor mode. And then we can run imenu to go to any definition to go to any declaration like get home r uh, and apparently after running that uh, we are able to go to definition um, so for example uh, let's see we want to find definition of uh, get city jr and indeed um, it, it works if it's within the same source file of course uh, it still does not work for cross-packaging identifiers so handle for is a um, it is probably identifier from servant or no, not necessary servant, maybe WAI. Anyway, it's an, another library. And uh, how about uh, find references? Um, right, so find references also works uh, somehow uh, for the function, yeah, for this file. Um, how about widget for? Right, um, so it does not it works for widget 4 too okay so it has some uh, support for uh, go to definition and find references um but uh, as usual it does not support such things across uh, package so and finally we have the um, sledgehammer uh, hls haskell language server uh, it can be used with eglot but the problem with H, uh, so HLS has um, uh, has many many features that is because it is a language server like renaming um, like LDoc for uh, standard libraries and and so on. Um, but uh, the problem with HLS is one that it is very very slow um, and I wouldn't use it with my laptop. Uh, and two is that it also does not support cross ref cross package referencing. In in fact, there's an outstanding GitHub issue about this. So yeah, cross package referencing and um, uh, go to definition is a uh, sort of a a common uh, shortfall, a common problem uh, for these existing Haskell code explorers. Then finally, we also have Hugo and Hackage, which uh, Hugo is like uh, is a search en search engine for Haskell identifiers, and uh, the results link to Hackage, which is the Haskell uh, documentation website for all Haskell libraries. So Haskell uh, Hackage um, has a functionality where you can uh, jump to the source code source source code file rendered in HTML, and you can you can click in the uh, on the identifiers there. Uh, to jump to definitions, but it does not support uh, find references, and it is rather basic. And then I learned about Haskell Code Explorer, which is a fully fledged Haskell um, Code Explorer. Um, it is written by someone else, and it is a web application for exploring Haskell package code bases. Um, the official reference instance for Haskell Code Explorer is available at this URL, which I will demo soon. Um, what I did with this package is I ported it to uh, GHC 9.2. Uh, I renamed it to HCL because I want to focus on Emacs client rather than JavaScript client, which I will explain later. And I also wrote an um, Emacs client package, of course. So this is what Haskell Code Explorer looks like. Um, at, on the on the home page, um, it, it it is a list of uh, indexed packages indexed by the indexer and one can filter out, filter by the package name, or look for identifiers directly across all packages. 
Um, right, so let's have a look at, say, base. Uh, there are three versions. Uh, let's have a look at the, the latest version, 4.12.0.0. Um, so once entering the package view, um, the, you are shown a list of uh, um, all uh, modules by their path, um, as well as um, a tree of uh, these module files. So and you can filter by module name or file name, or you can search for identifier within the same package or in all packages. Um, let's say we want to uh, learn about control monad, right? <coughs> And now we are in the module view. So the source file is presented to you and uh, it has links to identifiers. Um, and uh, when you hover over them, um, the documentation shows up, including the signature where it is defined. And you can go to its definition or find references. Let's say we want to go to the definition of monads. Uh, right, it is from, yeah, it jumps to the definition site of Monad uh, type class, right, and uh, if we click at the definition site, it brings up a list of references, and um, on the left you can choose which library uh, you want, which package you want to find references of uh, Monad in. Let's just Press fine. Look at the random one, AVWX, and uh, in the and here is a list of results um, where Monad is used uh, in AVWX. Uh, so this is a module path. So um, and one can go to any of these results. Okay, and uh, of course we can search for things in all packages or in the current package. Let's say hmm, I want to search for read. Ah, okay. So there's a. I think this is the read uh, that is commonly used in Haskell, the read type class for passing strings into values. Right. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think that's more or less it. Um. That's the uh, Haskell Code Explorer web application in all its glory. Now let's go back to the slides. Um, so um, that was the web application, uh, which is basically a JavaScript JavaScript client that um, talks to the server by sending requests and rece receiving and passing the JSON results or JSON uh, responses. So um, initially, I also I, I was interested in hacking the client, the web the web 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 client. Sorry, uh, it uses the Ember JS web framework. So the first thing to do was to npm install ember Klee, and it well um, it it show, it gives me twelve vulnerabilities, four low, two moderate, three high, three critical. Um, I mean, some sometimes like or I don't know how um, often it is the case when like we don't really care about these nasty vulnerabilities um, from Node.js uh, npm because they are so common. Um, but um, well, I, I don't quite like that. Um, another reason for favoring um, Emacs Lisp uh, Emacs client over a JavaScript client is user freedom, because Emacs is um, geared towards user freedom and it uh, allows user the maximum freedom to cust customize um, or mod the um, Emacs. And uh, um, I think uh, Emacs. Uh, clients can be a way to fix JavaScript trap, sort of like um, using user script to replace uh, non-free JavaScript. So, um, like there there are tools to do that. For example, like Hectilo. Uh, but why write JavaScript replacement if we can write Elisp replacement? Um, yeah. So if uh, if we uh, all write um, all kinds of uh, uh, front ends in Emacs. Uh, for commonly used web web applications like Reddit, Hacker News, um, what have you, um, then we sort of uh, have an Emacs app store where we can just install these applications and um, and uh, yeah and browse the web more freely. So um, back to hc.el, which is the Emacs client I wrote. Um, it I try to reuse as much of Emacs buildings as possible, including LDoc. 
um, for showing documentations, xref for cross-reference uh, compilation mode for showing search results of identifiers, outline mode for uh, a hierarchical, hierarchical view of package module identifiers, uh, sort of a cursor mode uh, for highlighting identifiers, help mode for displaying quick uh, help for uh, Haskell identifiers, and integration with the head org, which I will mention later, and etc. etc. Uh, it is available as HCEL without the dot on GNU Elpa. Okay, time for a demo. Uh, to start using HCEL, surprise, surprise, we run the HCEL command, and, it, and we are presented with a list of uh, packages indexed by the HCEL indexer. And, um, and it is, this is an outline mode, so we can tap to uh, list the list all the modules uh, represented by the uh, module path. And we can further tap into a list of identifiers declared in this module. Uh, well, now it asks whether you want to open module source. This is because um, some uh, module source code can be quite large and it can take a bit of time. So in this case, let's, the uh, control model is quite small. So let's say yes. And uh, we see the list of identifiers. Um, and, and one can uh, say jump to identifier forever. Um, so um, as you can see, the uh, identifiers at points are highlighted. So this can be particularly useful in a large function declaration where you want to see, for example, all the occurrences of an identifier uh, within in, inside the body of the declaration. Um, so these are um, declarations which in the Haskell mode are listed in iMenu. So we can do the same here um, in um, HCL source mode. And it lists a um, list of the, all the declarations with their signature. So let's say we want to jump to this uh, funny opera operator. And um, yeah, so it worked. And you can um, also go back and forth uh, uh, within, um, say, the um, declarations by pressing N and P. And similarly, um, you can do something similar in the outline mode by uh, toggling the follow mode, uh, just like in uh, org agenda. Okay, let's turn it off. Now, um, how about find definition references? So using xref, we can jump to the definition of int and jump back. Mm, jump to maybe, jump back. And uh, references, let's have a look at references of rec replicate m. And there are plenty of them, so maybe we want to check out GHC lib. Okay, so yeah, so here are all the references, and you can of course jump to any of them in the results. Cool. Um, you may have already noticed uh, the LDoc mode, uh, the LDoc displaying the documentation and signature of uh, <coughs> identifiers. So, um, so for example, here uh, it shows the doc signature of ref replica M, uh, where it is defined, and its documentation. Um, we can bring up the LDoc buffer, and uh, and so on. Um, so, um, in the LDoc buffer, there are also links to other identifiers, which um, takes you to the de definition of these identifiers, like min bond. Okay, so apparently this is not working. Uh, oh well, um, I'm pretty sure it maybe works. So let's go to nothing, or just. Okay, I think those didn't work because the module source for those identifiers um, is is not open. Okay, um, and of course you can. Um, search for any identifiers across all indexed packages by invoking hcl global ids. Now oh, let's see, we want to search for read. And uh, we are presented with a list of uh, results, uh, which are identifiers starting with read with capital R. And, and they also show uh, yeah, including where they are defined and the documentation, just like in LDoc. 
and and uh, one can also sort of uh, directly jump to um, identifier in the mini buffer in the mini buffer results. So, for example, we want to check out this read two defining base four point twelve point zero point zero data functor classes, and uh, there we go. Cool. Um, another functionality of uh, uh, HCL is um, the help help buffer integration. So we can do HCL help, and then let's say we want to learn about the read type class. And right, so this is a help buffer, and uh, you can jump to other definitions within the help buffer to read the documentation like reads prec okay so it says server version cannot be set by actual version no bounds so this means we need to uh, tell hco that the server is has the correct version so hco version fetch server version okay just wait a bit for it to uh, update the knowledge of the server version and now you can follow the links read read prec so you, you can do the left l and r to uh, navigate within the history read s read p and uh, just like in the help buffer for elis code you can go jump to the definition okay um i believe that is everything more or less um Yep. Okay. So let's conclude the demo. Okay. Now let's turn to Hadoc, which is an org backend for Hadoc. Hadoc is the, the documentation generator for Haskell packages. Um, for example, the Haskell, um, the, the say, official Haskell um, package library, package documentation website, Hackage, because uh, it has um, all the documentation there is generated by Hadoc um, into uh, the HTML format. So Hadoc has uh, several backends uh, that converts the inter intermediate representation uh, called interface to various uh, output formats, including HTML, uh, LaTeX, and uh, uh, Hugo. So uh, HTML is the main format uh, with a lot of features, uh, LaTeX less so, and I don't think it is widely used. Uh, so let's have a look at an HTML example, server.server. Um, so this is a PDF because um, these HTML files can be rather large and uh, slow down uh, EWW significantly. So it's faster to convert it to PDF and read it from PDF tools. Looks like this is uh, as big as it, as it goes. I hope you can still see it because, ah, okay. Can I still enlarge it a bit more? Maybe. Anyway, so this is servant.server. It is a module in the servant-server package. Um, it is a widely used uh, uh, package for uh, writing servers uh, that serves. So it starts with uh, a heading, which is the name of the module and the table of contents, and then a heading run the WAI application from an API. Um, under this heading, there are uh, all the relevant identifiers that that is uh, under um, that is concerned with running a WAI application from an API, including serve, uh, which is sort of a main one of the main entry points uh, for a servant server. Um, so it has a signature uh, linkable to the other identifiers. Um, the documentation, an example with this Haskell source code block. Okay, so that's what um, an HTML output looks like. Um, so, as I mentioned, there are several downsides or drawbacks with that. Like the HTML files can be huge and it can uh, slow down EWW. And uh, also, um, every module is an HTML of itself, and there's also an HTML for the package with a list of all the modules. Um, whereas the org backend, it is better in that um, it 
uh, is much more compact. So all the all the modules under the same package are included uh, in one file in one org file as subheadings, level two headings. So servant server servant dot server that is the module. Uh, so basically, this uh, level two heading contains all the information in this PDF. So run a WAI application from API serve. So uh, the um, it has a signature uh, that links to other identifiers um, and the documentation that's also linkable. And uh, the Haskell source block is now an org source block. And you can do all sorts of nice, interesting things with it using org Babel. So um, let's check the links as server. Right, so the link works. Application, right, request. So, um, yeah, so it also supports cross packaging, package linking. So, um, the following the link to request uh, takes us from servant.server, servant dash server package uh, org documentation to the WAI org documentation. Okay, so um, another nice thing with uh, org documentation is that you can use um, org functions like org go to to jump to any um, to jump to uh, any identifiers let's say we want to jump to application okay we have two application so it jumps to two application so I guess application is not um, identifier yes it is more like a type alias that's why we couldn't find it okay so that is Hadorp and of course um, I have a bit I implemented a bit of integration between Hadorp uh, and HDL so that's we can jump from one to the other so let's go back to servant oopsie um the let's see um server t um, maybe we want to um, check out the source code definition of server t okay uh, to find out like exactly what it what sort of type alias it is like what is the alias um so or type synonym so we run hdl identifier at point sorry hdl head hoc to hdl definition oh um, we have an HTTP error. Type server t not found in module src seven seven dot hs. Why? Well, this is because the HTC or server only understands um, it, it has it only has knowledge of uh, identifiers that are, that is defined in the original uh, source file. Um, so um, it is not aware of uh, say identifiers that are re-exported in the module. Uh, so most likely servant.server module re-exports uh, server t from another module. So we will probably have better luck looking into some internal modules like this one. Let's try this type class has context entry. Ah, so this time it's worked. And of course we can go the other direction from um, HCL to Hadorg. Like let's say if we want to um, display named context in the Hadorg documentation so that we can read about, like, say, other um, identifiers uh, documentation that is related to named context. So we do HCEO identifier at point to Hadorg, and it does take us to the seven server org file. Okay. And that concludes my presentation. Um, you can find uh, HCL in GNU Alpha, and you can also find the source code, as well as the source of Hadorg and instructions on how to generate org documentation using Hadorg um, in my Sigit instance. And thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.